that tastes like when Bruce Willis would actually care. <laughs> guys, it's a little bit of a random review here, but after the whole fiasco of Glass, I really wanted to go back and watch Unbreakable, which I, oddly enough, had only ever seen once, and I think I saw it about the mid-2000s. But it always stuck with me in terms of its concept, and having rewatched it now, I can definitely say it is probably the best Night Shyamalan movie that I personally have seen. I haven't seen all of his, but I've seen all of his quote-unquote good ones, and this is my favorite one for two very specific reasons. One is its dedication to staying within the realm of a realistic reality as the film tries to portray. And that's not just the idea of the heroes being in the real world, but the idea of a realistic sort of hero, the interactions between the characters being very real, very slow, and the whole movie itself being a bit of a slow burn. Also, definitely its cinematography done by Eduardo Serra, who keeps it so simple and these long, long takes without cuts and helps build this realm of reality, this realism into it. And then even the ending. The ending actually has those still frames with what happened to those characters afterwards. Just further and further developing this idea of a realistic world. So I definitely gotta give Shyamalan a lot of credit for keeping to this realm that he wanted to create to this world that this universe exists, which is a mirror of our own, in fact, of the time. The second thing is just the acting in this. The acting in this is actually really good. It's amazing to see Bruce Willis give a shit about a role that isn't John McClane. I've been watching the Die Hard movies a lot recently, just the three good ones anyways. Just seeing his reactions and his interactions with his family, with different people, with Elijah, is so genuine. I know I shouldn't be really praising the guy for doing his job correctly, but he really does give a lot into this character. And David Dunn is probably one of the best characters that Night Shyamalan has ever written. He has flaws. He's not a perfect human being. His entire life has been kind of in a search of a purpose. And his interactions with his son, some of the interactions are so good. Which, by the way, his son is also a very good actor in this movie. There's two scenes in particular that he stands out really well. Is The first is when he has the gun and he's pointing it at Bruce Willis. And he's saying, I won't hurt you, it'll just bounce off. And it's a very tense situation. And it plays out in a realm where you actually could believe a conversation like this would happen in this sort of situation if someone was, in fact, a possible superhero. How Bruce Willis calms, like, diffuses the situation, he says, I'm going to move away. He doesn't say anything about punishment in terms of what he'll do to his son or you know what the ramifications of what he would do would be. He just says, I'm going to move away. And his son doesn't want that because they are rekindling this relationship. He's trying to get his father back. And then when he puts the gun down, everyone just like, whoa, just sits down. And that's how you feel after watching the scene. Because it was all just one take, too. The second is when he reveals to his son what he did, like he's the savior. And there's so much emotion in that scene. They show it in glass, and I was trying to remember the significance of it. And there's just so much in it. His son just in arms of the idea that his dad has finally accepted this whole superhero thing, that he was in fact not wrong about what his he thought his father was. And he's just so happy to not only see his dad as a superhero, but to have his dad and his mom back together. I know I already said it, but I really want to talk about how good the cinematography is in this. The very first scene is when Elijah is born. And it's one take, yet there's four different angles in it. They keep on going up and down between the two, and then they go to the side, and then they go further back like this. And it's so good. And they do this several times in the movie. When Bruce Willis is on the train, when he's fighting the guy in the house, the freaking window curtain shot. Now that is one of the best shots in the movie, and it's literally just a standstill shot right at the camera. And there's these curtains that are in front of it, they're kind of like waving back and forth. If you really, really look, you can see that someone's down on the side, like tugging it, but it works so well in terms of when the breaks happen. Not just for basically a really good visual shot, but dramatic tension. 
as Bruce Willis slowly moves towards the curtain, there always cuts back and then it will open again as he's moved closer. And then when the villain appears, when the guy who's taken over the house, he appears in. Samuel Jackson is really good too and as this Elijah character. And this twist is, in my opinion, his best twist. Admittedly, when he looks at all the stuff on the side and he sees all the obvious bomb stuff on the side, it kind of demitigates it. Like, all he had to do is walk into the room like, oh, hey, you're building bombs here. All that needed was that handshake. And when you think about it, there's so much in that scene because Samuel L. Jackson is the one who says, I think this is where we shake hands because he knows that when he does, David Dunn is going to know everything about him and he is going to go down for everything that he has done. But he finally has resolved himself in terms of finding a purpose that he was the one who was able to bring David Dunn into the world. I just really like the idea of a realistic story in a world where superheroes could exist. This is something that Shyamalan really, really shined with in terms of his writing and in terms of his world building and in terms of directing. Every single part of this film is so detailed that really all he has to do is have Edward Russo hold, have the camera just on what matters. He doesn't need all this quick or interesting editing. It just is on the characters. Also, it helps that James Newton Howard provides a fantastic score for this film too. The music in this movie is so good. I keep forgetting just how good the music is in this film and it helps emulate so many of these scenes. So if you haven't seen Unbreakable, yes, it is a very slow burn. They tried to emulate this in glass, but not really the best in my opinion. But it is a very unique film. It is one of Shyamalan's best, if not his best movie. It has fantastic acting from Bruce Willis, the kid who plays his son, Samuel Jackson, Robin Wright Penn. Oh, that story's so good too. The idea with him rekindling his relationship with his wife is just really, really well done. And the cinematography is simplistic yet fucking gold. The music by James Newton Howard is a fantastic blend and the writing and twist is fantastic and probably, I, as I said, the best work that Shyamalan ever did. So in the end, I'm gonna give Unbreakable. I was surprised, I was actually thinking about giving this a six, but I really enjoyed this movie. I really like watching it. It is one of my favorite films that Shyamalan's ever done, so I'm gonna give it a seven out of seven. Honestly, this is the best one. I remember being kind of very much let down by The Sixth Sense because the first time he talks to his wife and his wife doesn't answer him, I was like, okay, of course, he's dead. That never really got to me, but Unbreakable has always stuck with me. And that's a movie that I've only ever seen once up until now, but I've always remembered it. Also that pool scene, that pool scene is just terrifying. That's one of the scariest stunts I've ever seen done. Anyways guys, hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time.